Hey what's up guys, it's Austin here and I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, I'm going to go and highlight some of the holdbacks I have that are growing up and some of the females that will be breeding next season. They're all inside of this rack over here, so super excited to get that to you guys. Before we get into that, huge shout out to DSS Reptiles and of course I got the hashtag Team Austin on there. I'm not too sure if they have anything on the sleeves, but they're definitely not slacking on the back. So go and check them out, DSS Reptiles. Let's get right into these really cool animals. So the first snake I'm going to be showing you guys is one that's definitely going to be breeding next season. This is a Pastel Enchi Possible Vanilla Clown, and I produced this girl back in 2018 and one of my first Vanilla Clown clutches. I'm still not 100% sure if she's just a Pastel Enchi Clown or she is the Pastel Enchi Vanilla Clown, but I am going to breed her to a Fire Clown combo, so hopefully we're lucky and hit some really nice Vanilla Cream combos. And of course, since it's Clown a Clown, everything will be Clown. So Vanilla Cream Clowns and then everything in between with all the other genes in the mix. I really like the head pattern. It looks like a sword. This one looks like an Excalibur sword with the handle towards the eyes down there and the blade going up into the neck. And Enchi really reduces the pattern on the clowns. It usually gives you just a dorsal stripe, but when you add pastel to it, it does make the pattern band over and you're left with these really cool dots. So now let's go and move on to the next snake. This next female right here is a real stunner. This is an Enchi Butter Clown, 66% head for hypo. And I'm really happy with this girl. I actually got this one in a split pairing between me and Billy. I had a double head hypo clown and he used the pastel and she butter double head hypo clown. We got really lucky in the odds. We actually hit a butter and she ghost clown. But Billy got the first pick and we with the second pick, I had to go grab this girl. But she just looks really cool. I'm not 100% sure if she's going to prove out head for ghost, but she is a lot brighter than some of the other butter and she clowns I have seen in the past. So hopefully that's a marker and she does prove out. I do have that leopard ghost clown boy who is breeding now. So hopefully I can get her and him paired next year and make some really cool leopard and she butter ghost clowns. So once again here we have Enchi in here, which is reducing the pattern down to a single dorsal stripe. We don't have the pastel like the last one which was making it band over and giving us those really nice dots. But we do have butter in here as well. And butter is just giving you this really nice creamy tone around there and actually giving you some of the oranges and some of the purples you're seeing in the dorsal. This girl is going into shed soon, so she's not looking her best, but still a really nice animal and I can't wait to get her breeding. This girl right here is an Ultramel combo, and I don't want to get too much into all the Ultramels because I still have to do that Ultramel video for you guys. But we'll just go and show off this one girl and maybe one more after. But this is a Cypress Fire Yellow Belly Ultramel that I picked up from Justin Kabilka last year. And this girl is growing like a weed. She's around that 900 gram mark right now. So hopefully she just continues to be pounding the food and gains a couple more hundred grams. And next season I can get a really cool clown combo to lock to her. Hopefully my Fire Yellow Belly Leopard Spot Nose Clown and make some really cool double heads. But something really cool about this girl is right here, it looks like she has a little lizard or chameleon on her. Comment down below if you see it. There's the head. We got some legs. Doesn't really look too much like a chameleon, but it's definitely lizard-like looking. And this girl is just amazing. Once again, she's a Cypress Fire Yellow Belly Ultramel. And basically, the Cypress does is give you this really uniform pattern with a really nice dorsal stripe. But then you also have Fire in there, which is just brightening up all these tones, giving you a little bit more contrast between the really nice pale yellows and that purple tone in the middle. And then, of course, we have Yellow Belly in here as well which is just giving us all this yellow on the belly. This girl could be really good to work into the Ultramel Freeway project, but I think I'm gonna go and put this right into the clowns because Ultramel Clowns is a goal that I'm chasing and a lot of you are too. A lot of people have been hitting me up on Instagram talking about how much they love Ultramel. I'm glad you guys see the potential in it. It's definitely a beautiful gene. Who doesn't like an orange snake with some really nice purple tones? This girl is deep in shed right now, but I had to show you her. She still looks good in shed. Her colors are not at their best, but she's still a really pretty looking snake. This is my vanilla spot nose yellow belly clown I produced last year. And I am just shocked with how much this girl has grown. She is just around a year old today and she is at 900 grams. So hopefully she continues to pound food. We do not hit that 1000 gram wall and she can just plow through it, get to 1200 grams and we can start locking her right away. Hopefully with an ash fall hit clown and make some spot nose freeway clowns, vanilla spot nose freeway clowns and vanilla freeway clowns. That would just be amazing. 
but I really like this girl. The spot nose is such a staple inside of the clown project. It does such amazing things. Gives you all these really nice orange tones. And of course, once again, her colors are not looking her best. She is deep inside of Shed. But right over here, I do have her brother who is just starting to get into the breeding rotations. And he might be missing the vanilla, but he is very similar to what his sister looks like. So these are pretty much what the colors look like, just to give you an example. This girl does have a little bit more oranges and a little bit more red on the dorsal, but this guy is just stunning. And I'm just gonna put him back for a second while we talk about his sister a bit more. And she is just amazing. She's growing so nicely. I really like her head. Yeah, that classic spot nose head and right inside the middle over there we have a really nice orange stamp it's usually a lot more orange when she's not in shed this combo really strikes my eye yellow belly and spot nose work so well together you get all these really nice orange flaming coming up between the pattern and you get some speckling inside right here just which makes it look that much better I wish this girl was not in shed right now but she is so hopefully I can go show you her in another video in the future Right here we have another spot nose clown combo. This is actually a pastel spot nose yellow belly clown possible vanilla. This one came from that clutch where I lost a lot of them inside of the incubator. It was due to that heat spike I had and the malfunction in the equipment. It definitely sucks but to keep an animal like this from the clutch back is a real joy for me and I'm really happy to go and see her grow. She's around 950 grams, 960 grams right now which is amazing. I would love to get her breed next year just like the other one. But this one is a little bit different if you noticed obviously there's pastel in this and pastel has changed the look drastically so you're no longer left with those orange tones you have just a whole bunch of different tones of yellow with a little bit of orange and some purple in them we have these purple borders around the pattern which is just super cool and we have this gold flaming coming up from the belly and that is from the yellow belly the overall pattern of the snake, once again, is from the spot nose. But if you notice, the head is a lot different from that last girl. That's because the pastel and the spot nose tend to give a head like this. A lot of pastel combos inside of the clown have a similar head. So if you are trying to identify your morph or what snake you hatch by the head, especially in pastel clowns, it's really hard to do. But nonetheless, this snake is just amazing. There's so many options I could do with this snake. I can't wait to get this girl into the Ultramal Clown Project, maybe even the Freeway Clown Project because she does have the yellow belly. I do have an Ashfall Hit Clown male, so fingers crossed she can grow up and I can get a really cool clutch from her. This next girl right here was actually inside of the breeding rotation this year, but I decided to move her back down after she stopped pairing and stopped eating. This is a pastel spot nose yellow belly and she 100% head for pied. So I'm taking the spot nose pied and I'm trying to bring back a lot of the pattern into it because if you guys already did not know, the spot nose pies tend to only have head pattern and the rest of the snake tends to be very white. But when you add Enshi into pie combos, it brings back all the pattern and gives you a really cool look. So I'm hoping that the spot nose Enshi will be more of a medium white or a high pattern combo, especially with how cool the Enshi and the spot nose react with each other. The spot nose kind of gives a wacky pattern and the Enshi likes to band over. This is what you're left with. It's a really wacky pattern, a lot different than what you're seeing in other ball pythons and something I definitely was not expecting. And of course we have pastel in here, which is giving you all the really nice yellow tones and oh, she struck at me and then you also have the yellow belly which is just giving you all the flaming coming up from the belly and which of course inside a pied gives you those really jagged saddles so on the blotches with this pattern it gives you all these really nice jagged pattern on the edges which looks super cool and I think the spot nose and enchi yellow belly will just work together so well inside of the pied so hopefully this girl will breed really soon she's been eating amazing since moving her back down I think it's almost time to move her back up into the bigger bin and get her paired I'm just waiting on a new mail that I'm getting so hopefully I get the mail next week and I can show you all the really cool pickups that I got and then breed this girl to that really cool mail and get some amazing combos I don't want to spoil anything so just stay tuned for next week to see what videos come out this next female right here I'm super excited about this is actually a split snake me and Lord of Lion both own this snake it's for a joint project we're in together this is an acid fire 100% head enhancer 50% possible head for G-Stripe 
and this girl is just amazing. She's been growing like a weed lately. Last time I checked her about a month ago, she was around 950 to 975 grams, but I just weighed her before putting her down on this table, and she's right now around that 1200 gram range, looking amazing. If you didn't know, acid is just like the confusion gene or the static gene. They're all three pretty much the same. They just have a little bit different characteristics to them. So the acid really whacks out the pattern, gives you all these really nice dark tones and gives you that head stamp. And then you have fire in here as well, which is just actually doing the opposite. It's giving you all these really nice yellows and cream colors that you're seeing coming through. A nice contrast to all the black. But when we get Enhancer into this snake, it's going to be looking that much better. I'm just trying to contain her inside of the bin, but she's just looking amazing. I really love the head stamp on this girl. Huge shout out to Brad at Prodigious Pythons for letting me have this girl. If you guys are ready or not checking them out, they have a lot of that fractal stuff, which is Het Monsoon. So definitely go and check them out. But really cool stuff. I can't believe he let me have this girl. I believe he still has a male and he's doing some wonders with him. But this girl is just amazing and I'm so pleased to have her. Me and Lord are actually going to be doing a split pairing this year with Billy. And we're going to be pairing this girl right here to an Enhancer Clown 100% head for G-Stripe. So the end goal there would be Acid Fire Enhancer G-Stripes 100% head for Clown. Fingers crossed we get really good odds. I hope this girl continues to grow because we're gonna need her to be around 17 to 1800 grams to get a nice big clutch from her. So fingers crossed again and let's move on right to the next snake. So right here is the first male in the video. This is a pastel yellow belly blackhead hurricane male. I got this from Mutation Creation. And if you guys remember the unboxing video, he was really small, but he's been eating really good lately and definitely growing. So I can't wait to get him into the Ultramel projects because I really like to see the Hurricane instead of the Ultramel and maybe into the Monsoon project in the years to come. I do have a ton of holdbacks in here that are possible double head Monsoon Pied with great markers for both. So hopefully I can get one of those paired to him and make some Hurricane head Monsoons. And then maybe even if I'm lucky enough and by the time that is, I can have the Ultramel version of this guy and make some double head Ultramel monsoons with the Hurricane, which would just be super cool. And of course in the snake we have Pastel, which is just brightening up the whole pattern. You also have Yellow Belly, which is giving you all these really nice flamings coming up from the belly. Also giving you some of that nice speckling you're seeing on the belly and the actual yellow on the belly as well. And then you have Blackhead, which is giving it that really nice dark undertones you're seeing in here. Usually with Pastel, you're getting a lot brighter tones, but the Blackhead is making it that much darker. And then of course we have the Hurricane, which gives you these double bodybuilder biceps you're seeing over here, which is just super cool. And then it whacks out the pattern that much more, so definitely going to get him to the Clown, the Ultramel, and the Monsoon. Who knows, maybe even the Pied. So comment down below what project you would put him into first, and let's move on to the next snake. So, a lot of people have been asking for an update on the twins, and since I'm already tackling this rack and the twins are inside, I definitely thought I would go and show you these guys, but by no means are they ready to breed. These are both Pastel and she Cryptons, or Pastel and she Double Het Clown Cryptic. If you guys did not already know, Cryptic and Clown are allelic, and when you put them together, you get something that looks like a Cryptic, and we call them Cryptons. They usually have really wide eye stripes, and striping pattern on the sides of the neck. And these two actually came from the very same egg. They both hatched out and they were really small, both of them fit in one hand, and they were both around 19 grams. They're both pushing 400 grams right now, which is amazing. I know a lot of times twins do not make it because they are smaller in the egg, and sometimes it does take them a little bit longer to get onto the food. Let me see if I can just get these guys back inside. But something really cool about these guys is that no, not only are they twins, they're identical twins. They both have the exact same head stamp with the same beauty mark on their head. So it looks like a female washroom sign. So let me turn around for a second. A female washroom sign with a little beauty mark on the side of the head. And we have the exact same thing on this one. Yes, you are seeing double. And they're both female, so really cool. I was originally going to hold these back, and they are inside of my holdback rack. But... I do need some extra space, especially for the Ultramo stuff I keep on buying and all the brand new clown stuff I'm getting. So I am going to be listing at least one of these females. If you guys are interested, definitely hit me up on Instagram. I might even sell both, uh, maybe even to the same person, preferably because they are twins and they have been right next to each other since day one. Literally a lot of times when I open the tubs, 
they're doing the exact same thing and they can't see each other at all which is just really cool maybe some twin telepathy going on there comment down below if you ever hit twins inside of one of your clutches and you notice the same thing but really cool females it's gonna be sad to go and let them go but I need the space so if you guys are interested hit me up at Royal Highness Pythons on Instagram but now let's move on to the last snakes right over here is another really cool female this is a super banana clown and this was produced by Billy at Mutation Creation but I actually picked this one up from Matt Quinn and it's just an amazing snake he purchased it from Billy then I was lucky enough to get the opportunity to purchase it off him but I really like the banana clowns and having a super is that much more better because everything this girl produces is going to be a banana clown or if I pair him or at least a banana head clown so really cool I can't wait to go and get her breeding she did start off as a really picky eater for me which kind of sucked but since then she's gotten right back on eating she's around 720 grams right now hopefully she just continues to eat she does have a little bit of poop on the side of her face I just noticed probably should have washed that off but she is eating right now uh, but she is on ASF so I'm trying to double feed her every two weeks just to get her that much more of a meal because the ASFs are a little bit small but an amazing snake. I just love what the super banana did. It's a really a lot different than the banana clowns. Banana clowns tend to have a little bit more of a brighter yellow and some oranges inside of the back. But with the super banana, you get more of a pale yellow look and you get these really nice purple spots along the side, which are just super cool. And you also get this purple and pink dorsal stripe, which is just amazing. I really like the purple inside of the snakes. Some of the pink tones too, but the purples really do it for me. That's why I love the Ultramels. I really like the banana clown stuff. It kind of looks similar to the Ultramel clown stuff. It's not as rich. So I'm definitely excited for all the Ultramel clown combos in the future. I probably won't be putting this girl into the Ultramel clown project because it would be a waste of the super banana since they're so similar inside the color. But I'm definitely going to get this into some really cool clown combos. Maybe even some double recessive clown stuff. Obviously not with the Ultramo, maybe with the clown pides. Who knows, but a lot of avenues to take this girl down. I just can't wait till she's breeding. This girl right here is going to be the last snake inside of this video. Reason being, I've not even gone halfway down this rack. And I've showed you so many cool stuff. And I've skipped so many cool things. Mostly because of the Ultramel video. But I can't show you guys everything. So I'm going to do a part 2 to this video. And show you the lower half. Which contains most of the Het Pied stuff. And a lot of the Double Het Monsoon Pied stuff. Which I'm super excited for. But I thought this was a great snake to end off with. This is a Super Orange Dream and she Fire Girl and this was actually produced by Brandon Chrysler at Creative Scales. It was a holdback for him. She wasn't eating for so long that he thought he would go give it to someone else. I was that someone else who was lucky enough to buy it and as you can see she's a chunky monkey. She came here, got into the ARS bin and she has just been killing rats, eating them all. It's been amazing. She's around 870 grams right now so not too far from breeding weight. We still have another 300-400 grams to go but I'm definitely getting really excited. She is on ASFs as well right now. Hence why she was a picky eater before. She has been eating them very consistently for me and basically will eat anything I throw into her tub. Even rats sometimes if I do a little switcheroo with the rat and the ASF. I will be getting a video with you guys with all the tips I have for eating. The switcheroo is one of them so that's a little sneak peek right there. But a lot of cool videos coming out in the future. Sorry to put the snake on pause right now. But I am going to be doing a lot of cool stuff. I have some unboxings. I got some egg cutting. Some updates. And some how-to videos. Some tips and tricks. So stay tuned for all that stuff. But now finally getting back to the snake. Right here we have the Super Orange Dream and she Fire. And such an amazing snake. The tones and the colors in the snake definitely do not do justice with the camera and especially when I picked her up because she has changed a lot since I got her originally. Um, she has all these really nice purple tones which are kind of faded right now but nonetheless really nice purple tones. That's it from the Super Orange Dream mixed with the Enchi and the Fire. The three together just to give you some really wacky and nice colors. Of course we have the Enchi in here which is just banding everything up and giving you these really nice wide eye stripes. She's trying to hide from the camera. So stop hiding. But the end she gives you these really nice wide eye stripes and all the banding throughout the pattern. And the banding is actually even increased in this instance with the orange dream and the super orange dream. So the super orange dream just cleans up the pattern entirely. 
That's why you're left with these really nice clean bands over here. You're not seeing any holes, keyholes, or alien heads inside of them. And then you have fire in there as well. Orange Dream and Fire work really well together at brightening up the snake, giving you that creamy look. And when you have the Super Orange Dream inside, it really turns that cream up a notch and you're left with this. This snake is just amazing. I'm definitely going to be plugging this in some Pied and some Ultramel stuff in the future. Who knows, maybe even some Ultramel Pie stuff. But we'll have to go and wait and see what I get inside of the future. But that is pretty much going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed everything I showed you inside of this rack so far. There's a lot more snakes to show you. Part 2 is going to be coming out, and you guys still have to go and wait for that Ultramel video. Definitely go and hit a like on this video, share it, subscribe if you haven't already. I'm sure a lot of you have. There's some really cool videos coming on in the future, and I don't want you guys to miss it. So don't forget to hit that bell right over there next to the subscribe button. It'll notify you anytime I post a video, and usually my videos are premieres. So it will notify you in advance, and you can hit that set reminder button, and you'll be set for the next video. So that's it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.